Hey everyone, today we are talking about which MFA programs you should apply to. But before that, if your studio habits need a kick in the butt, Art Prof has everything you need, tutorials, critiques, and that good old professional development. So Clara, you did an MFA, and Jordan, you did an MFA. How was that? What should you look for? My MFA program was a wreck. I went to the New York Academy of Art and it was a bad experience for me. I regret it so much. I went there as a sculpture major and I actually ended up doing quite a bit of printmaking as well. I made a lot of work and I don't regret the skills I gained, but in retrospect, it was not a good program for me. I'm your cautionary tale. <laughs> Well, I've got a question. What were you looking for and how did it not serve your needs? Because right now that's pretty vague. It, you just said it wasn't the right fit, but what could it have had that would have been better for you? It was the wrong part of the art world. It was this tiny segment of extremely conservative figurative painters. And I just hated it because I came from RISD, which was extremely open minded and these people were just so uptight and I know it hurt me in terms of getting hired as a professor. I did eventually land at RISD, but I think you all know my sob story about not ever becoming full-time. And I know a lot of that's because I went to quote the wrong area of grad school. Okay. Jordan, you went to Academy of Art University in San Francisco, California. How was your MFA for you? Um, I actually enjoyed the program. Uh, it, it happened very suddenly. I graduated from RISD in June of 2017, and then three months later, I was in grad school. And so I was very terrified at the beginning because I didn't really have a lot of things se secured yet. But uh, I think it really helped me develop as an artist. It really pushed me forward on my projects like Shadow Boxers. It got a big jump forward because it was my thesis, and uh, I ended up excelling a lot um, as, my, as my time there just continued to go on. I made a lot of friends. So I, I can't really say anything bad about my time at grad school, which I guess is a good thing. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I actually kind of miss it sometimes. Not the all-nighters though, never the all-nighters. <laughs> and Lauren, you are in your MFA right now at Hunter College in New York, New York. And how's it going for you? Well, I am literally in my studio right now on this live stream, which you can see here. So I spend a lot of time here. I love it. It was or it is the, the program that fits me and my personality best. It's a public school. It's very big. There are over 120 MFA students here. And I... You know, I spent a few years applying to places thinking I wanted to go to the fanciest Yale, Columbia, whatever, not realizing that that wasn't didn't fit my attitude either about schooling or about the kinds of uh, pressures or lack thereof, um, you know, when you're an artist and a working person in the world. And I believe that you took some time off, Lauren. I took four years off after my BFA. Jordan, you went in right away. <laughs> and Lauren, how many years did you take off? Uh, I took, I think, four years off, three or four years off. It's a personal decision. Depends on your life situation. But if you can take some time off just as a breather, it's helpful. I mean, Jordan, it sounds like that was a lot for you to graduate and then go straight <laughs> into your MFA. Well, yes and no. I think the the parts that made it difficult were the logistics of getting, like, how is I going to move from the East Coast to the West Coast with very little money and all that stuff. Um, but the concern I'd, I'd have for myself was if I take too long in between, I might end up struggling more in the long term. And I might not even ever even get another chance to go to grad school. And I was concerned that I would actually be held back more if I waited rather than just going straight in because I was already in that student mindset. 
That's so interesting, Jordan, because I had the opposite thought where if I went through everything too quickly, then I wouldn't have the momentum coming out of grad school because I would have been a student always in school. So I chose to have years in the world before going back and kind of using it as a get out of jail free card when I was in a rut. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, I, well, I don't think I would have been able to begin a career anyway. You know, if I had been able to, if I had the skill to make it in the field that I wanted to, I wouldn't have needed grad school, but I didn't. And so I was like, mm -hmm. it's either going to be working at Foot Locker or Target for the next few years as I try to develop my skill, or I'm just going to go straight through and, and just, you know, hustle and figure it out. So that was kind of my mindset. Um, but then the crash came later after I graduated, that one that you're talking about. So. Well, yeah, it seems to depend on what you want to use your MFA for. Like, it sounds like you really wanted it to gain a certain set of skills and a certification so you could work in a certain field. Whereas I think with painters, it's um, nobody wants to give a job to a painter. You've got teaching and you've got a few other things, but it's more about your studio development and making connections, I guess. Keep in mind, those of you who are thinking about an MFA, and tell us in the chat who here is thinking about one, who is applying this year, and who it's not relevant. It is not relevant for many people. People don't realize that a lot of MFA candidates don't get in anywhere the first time. That's extremely common. And you have to think about applying more than once. And I wish I had done this because when I applied, the only place I got into was the New York Academy of Art. And I just applied to them on a whim. And I remember crying my eyes out when I got all of those rejections. And in retrospect, I should have waited because Lauren, you waited, right? You applied more than one year. Yeah, I think I did three years of applications and I was really hoping to get into Yale because I got that interview the first time and I ultimately got rejected. But I said, oh, well, you know, maybe it'll happen the next time or the next time. And many people that I knew also didn't get in. It does take a few times. One of my friends applied to RISD four times or something before getting in. And then he ended up not going anyways. He decided he was. So oftentimes doing the applications multiple times over multiple years actually gives you better clarity about what you want and what you don't want. You're able to grow as a person and an artist, which I think is very, very important. And Jordan, for everybody who applies to any BFA or MFA, it's a very emotional feeling because you're getting these rejections, you're getting waitlisted. Do you have any tips, Jordan, for how to ride that roller coaster? Um, <clears throat> well, I saw it happen a, a couple times um, for my classmates and stuff. They told me that something I got waitlisted for RISD or whatever. And I would just say, don't put your your future on a college, um, put, like getting allowing you into the school. And because they can't determine your future just because you go to a quote unquote top art school or even even if it's not art school, let's say you go to a law school or something like that or medical school, they're not going to determine your future. Yes, the accolades may help and people might be able to recognize the name, but that's the common pitfall I see is they say, if I don't go to this one school, then I will never make it here. And that's just not true at all. And it never has been. And it depends on what you want to do. Lauren, do galleries care about where you got your MFA? Some might, but there's a lot of them who just say, I want to see good work. Yeah, exactly. I think that, and also you shouldn't go to school just to get in a gallery because that is one just very amorphous that doesn't do anything for your work and having your work improve and galleries yeah make their own decisions about who they want to work with they can be very unpredictable the market's unpredictable all of that it changes every few years so don't don't bet on that but they the school is is more for setting you up with a group of artists and a group of mentors and 
all of their connections. And then that's how you find galleries and things is who knows who in this giant web. The only time when I think people really care where you got your MFA is if you're applying for a teaching position at the college level. If you look at the faculty who are teaching at RISD or various art schools, Yale and Columbia across the board, at least in the fine arts. If you're teaching animation, it's a little bit of a different thing. But I know for sure, because I had a no-name art school as my master's on my resume, it really hurt me. And that's why, wait, if I just waited one year, it would have been a big difference. And it, my MFA is still the one time period of my career that I feel almost embarrassed by because I, I just, there, there was no prestige in the name. And I know you're not supposed to care about that, but it bothered me that I didn't wait for that. And the experience was just rotten. I mean, it was not a good community. Like Jordan, you had a great community of friends and artists who you really liked. And I'm sure that made a big difference for you. Yeah, like even just this photo, everyone that you see, every face that you see, I had a personal connection or relationship with these people. We were, this is the Draw Hogs Anonymous crew. Uh, if, if I've mentioned that on previous streams throughout the years. This is part of them. And, um, and community is such a big thing because you need to, I, I don't think it's necessarily a great thing for an artist to just be isolated all the time and, you know, in their little closet. I think you need uh, outlets. I think you need to get a sense of what other people are like and they can help inspire and influence you on your work. Pat is saying, I did a BA, MA in social science program, end game was teaching. Art school feels so foreign to me. Hearing about these MFA programs is so interesting. Seems like there are so many avenues. Yes. And by the way, you don't need a BFA at an art school to apply for an MFA because Lauren, I'm sure you have friends at Hunter who didn't go to art school, I'm guessing. Yeah, many of them. And they're of all ages, too. I'd seen some comments earlier in the chat about waiting for a few years or, or not. There are people who are in their 40s and 50s in this program. There was a woman earlier in the program who was, I think, in her 70s or something. So it's more about when, at least for this particular part of the art world, it's about when you feel like you are ready to experiment and want a, a place that feels safe to do so. Yeah, like Ginger here is saying, I think if I decide to get an MFA, I'm taking time off first. There was a artist, Nell Painter, who did a master's at RISD and she had a whole academic career before she went back and she wrote a book called Old and Art School that some of you may want to check out. And so don't make the assumption that, oh, you're late to do your MFA. You do your MFA whenever it's a good fit because it's a big financial commitment. This is not just some program that you're gonna do for a week, it's, it's expensive. And yes, there are scholarships out there, but guess what, everybody wants them. <laughs> All right. Next thought, oh my gosh, this is the most important thing. Do your research. Really find out what the schools are about. Because Lauren, I think a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm going there. And it's like, no, you should see what else is out there. And one of the ways to do that is to look at alumni. So Lauren, how is this good insight in terms of what program to apply to? The <clears throat> alumni has already, or the alums, I don't know, alumnus, is that one person? <laughs> They've already gone through the program. And so you are seeing what it looks like on the other side once they're out of the program. And you can see the type of work that they're doing now. And they usually also have a, a history that you can look back on. You can see the work from grad school or directly out of grad school versus now. So it gives you a pretty good idea of what you can expect for a trajectory. 
And I would advise not just looking up famous alumni because that's a very small subset of people. A lot of schools will have a directory of all the alumni, so you can just click through. I know Hunter has one. You can click through and it'll lead you to their website or whatever in their artist statement, and you can see what, what they do and what they've done since and kind of creep on their life a little bit. <laughs> well, Jordan... When you were looking for a master's program, I'm sure you thought about, hey, where did these alumni land? Where did a lot of them end up? Um, a little bit. Well, here's the thing. Um, when I when I graduated from Rizzi, I decided to go visit San Francisco to visit one of the professors at the grad school. We, we had known each other for years. And he showed me around the building and I saw the artwork on the walls. So I didn't need to look up like the current student work because I just saw it all around me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I could tell that this was pro level work. And these were students who were 19, 20, 21 years old. And, you know, as time went on, I would hear conversations about people working at these big companies like Blizzard or Riot or Naughty Dog, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. And I would just kind of hear it. And so, I almost didn't do research by looking on the computer. I did research just kind of by proxy of being in the environment. Seven Angelic says, how did you guys feel about the cost? The price tag of school has always felt prohibitively intimidating. I just paid off my student loans two years ago. I'm 46. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. I didn't know that. Oh my God. And that's a long time. And it's so expensive in the U.S. I mean, a lot of the schools now are eighty thousand dollars a year, Ugh, and you're yeah, going to. Oh yeah. my gosh! So, Lauren, you're going to a public university, and I'm sure that's a difference. Yes, it is. So you can get in-state tuition after living in New York for a year and basically showing your your rent, lease, whatever, that you're on a lease. And then the tuition drops to, I think I pay between like three, like 3,500 a semester, which is what, like 6,000 or 7,000 a year, something like that, which is, it's still money. It's still a real ding. It's still, the hustle is so hard, but it's doable. And I don't have to accumulate mountains of debt. So I applied there after going to a whole bunch of places and applying and they give me, they say, oh, we have a great aid package for you, but it was still meaning that I would have to pay 30000 a year or something like that. So yeah, I, I like public school. <laughs> This was not an option for me. I went to graduate school in 2002. There was no Instagram, but this is an option now because Jordan, people think about Instagram as, oh, it's where I show my work, but you can do a lot of research on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, we, there, there's such thing as social media stalking and usually that's done in the context of like a, a relationship or crush or something like that, <laughs> but you can do that for students and seeing what their work looks like. You know, oftentimes people will post where they went to school or they'll have a tag, a hashtag at some point, like, oh, this is us at the pizza night or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. From five years ago, you can look at their work and, uh, and kind of snoop in, in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. So yes, stalk people in a, in a moral way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who's watching this in a year from now. We, we don't condone do actual stalking. Do not yeah. stalk people. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren, another way to use Instagram, you want to look up galleries. Let's say you want to have a gallery exhibition at some point in your life, or you want to make a life as a gallery artist. Let's say New York is your target because that's what everybody wants. But Lauren, how do the galleries help you do research on where to go for an MFA? The galleries show you where they are kind of looking for people. As I said before, it shouldn't be the be all end all of your experience as your MFA. This I think is very particular to painting, which is a highly commodified art, but you can see the galleries are always hunting the MFA programs because they always want the hot 
new, young, or fresh out of grad school thing. That's Lauren. Uh, so that's me. So I am working with a gallery right now. Uh, I'm working with Half Gallery. I've got a show there in March. So you should all come to New York in March. But me aside, they, um, they visited me at my studio, which is close by to the gallery. And if you look at the artwork from the gallery, you can see, oh, what kind of artwork have they shown in the past? Well, my friend Jin around the corner is also working with Half Gallery. So it shows, okay, Hunter, Hunter seems to at least have proximity at some level to the space. They show a lot of different people. But that shows that where those relationships are kind of happening and where people cross paths. And a lot of people have very vague ideas about exhibiting. And what I find is a lot of the people I consult with who have interest in that career, they say to me, oh, I want to show in galleries. And I'm saying, what type of gallery? There's yeah. so many yeah. <laughs> types of galleries and some are co-ops and some are commercial, but only in this part of the world. And some of them are shishi near galleries. And I just find people just don't, do their research, not just on the program, but on the field. Because Jordan, I think a lot of people, like we have a question here from Abitha. I want to pursue character design. I have a bachelor's degree. I'm applying for an MFA. Not sure which program I should take, MFA, illustration, or animation. So Jordan, in a nutshell, are illustration and animation very different fields? Yes, they are. Um, so, so illustration is more about how to draw things, right? Uh, the, these are, you know, how to draw characters, how to draw backgrounds and props and things like that. Animation, when you talk about in this context of a school, is teaching you how to animate. And you typically in the animation industry, ironically, we don't really do a lot of animation here, um, especially for like shows and stuff that's usually sent to a place like South Korea or China or India. So if you want to work in the animation industry like a Nickelodeon or something, you probably want to pursue illustration and get your drawing level up because it's a very different field, if that makes sense. Yeah, and people don't realize oftentimes what illustration is. I was an illustration major at RISD, and I don't know why I majored that. I sort of followed my friend into illustration because we switched from painting into illustration. And at the time, I did not know what illustration was. And then I took all these classes. I was like, whoa, that's not what I thought it was. <laughs> and Lauren painting, oh my gosh, there's so many categories of painting. Yeah, there are. And there are so many different types of painters in the world. And even within what I consider an extremely niche area, this painting world of New York, there are many different types of painters. So right now, figurative painting has been really in for the past five years, maybe. There are a lot of artists of color that are really skyrocketing, gaining huge prominence right now. Layla just got signed by a gallery, which Layla, we've, we've had on Art Prof several times for her MFA, right, Clara? Yep. Yeah. So it's like, so there and there are also abstract artists there are new media artists and there's a place for everybody you just really have to you know talk to the people that are interested or that are doing the things that you want to be doing really also the new york city art world is very fickle lauren i was born in the wrong decade because i wanted to do figurative painting which was not cool in the early 2000s right and you really have to not cater to those trends in my opinion i mean certainly some people do but i think i think fundamentally you should make the work you want to make you shouldn't say oh this is trendy i think i'm going to do that all right Clara, you're but you're making the figurative artwork though maybe you should maybe you should try to talk to some galleries get a show up you know <laughs> Or I could apply to Yale. I could get my second master's. <laughs> Maybe then RISD will hire me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are a lot of public showings of MFA stuff. Jordan, tell us about the spring show at your grad school. 
so the spring show was this big artist showcase every at the end of every year at the end of may um every department would show the best of the best work you have to turn in your work and apply to get in and it's like a gauntlet and so the spring show is the best of the best of the best they they bring out different companies um so two of my pieces got in so this is my early version of Jaden from Shadow Boxes and some other characters. Black Panther's in there too in that bottom drawing. But, <laughs> um, but a lot of people end up even getting hired as a result of having their work in the spring show. So it's a massive deal, not just to get in, but to if you win an award or if you get hired somewhere, it's, it's a really big deal. And Lauren, I think you just came off Open Studios. What does this look like at Hunter? It looks like this picture here, which is from last Open Studios in the spring. That's my studio. I guess this is on the website right now. I didn't know this. Clara told me. But I'm not even in this photo. That's my parents. They're in the front. So my parents are Hunter famous, which I think is hilarious. Um, yeah, so that happened this past week. And it's the one, It was. it's for one day only, six hours, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. this time around. And it was the one time where people from the public or interested applicants or galleries or friends or family like my parents, anybody can come in and see what the students have been working on over the past year. And it's very packed. It's kind of like your spring show, Jordan. And it's the one time I think where you are able to interface with a lot of different people make a lot of new friends like at once and also see your peers work because all of your peers have their studios open too. And that's actually, I think, really the most fun part about it. Well, this is great because you'll have conversations with current MFA students that you can't have on Instagram. Right. I mean, Jordan, at your spring show, you probably got to talk to people in real life. And how is that different than, say, asking questions on Instagram? Um, well, I think everything's just better in real life in, in general <laughs> um, for, for pretty much everything. And when you talk to them in person, you build a connection with them that online, you're just a username with a profile picture, you know, and hopefully someone who doesn't spell horrifically, you know? So when you're in that situation, you get to really appreciate someone's art. You get to know a little bit about them. You can even just the way that they carry themselves, you can see how that carries uh, that into their work. It's really, really interesting to see kind of both side by side a person like that. Jamie's asking, do you think mentorship and art community account for more artistic growth than a quote, prestige MFA? What's your take, Lauren? I think that y yes, the community is the most important part because the prestige itself is not going to get you anything or make you go anywhere or make you want to continue making artwork. In fact, a lot of the time, I think sometimes that prestige can be so heavy and suffocating that it can make you not make artwork anymore. It can feel really toxic. It's definitely your the people that are around you, the people that you become friends with. Those are the people. That's all you have after you graduate is the those people. So you want a place where you really feel compatible with others and they will ultimately be the ones too that are going to give you your opportunities when you graduate. It's so make as many friends as possible, make genuine good friendships that you keep up after you graduate and those will eventually evolve into the types of projects and places that you want to be a part of. This is where I'm just so bummed about my MFA experience because I had two really close friends who I just loved to death. But the community that Jordan's talking about, that you're talking about, Lauren, I didn't have that. I didn't, everybody was so mean and so competitive. And it was not fun. I mean, I really was miserable and frustrated by everybody around me. I remember at the end of my program when we were doing the thesis, I worked really hard to be on top of it. And I finished my project early, like a week early. And I had somebody come to me because there are a lot of people who did not do that and were so, so behind. And one of the students yelled at me and they said, hey, Clara, Sarah needs help with her project. Like, how is this my responsibility to help you because you couldn't keep yourselves organized? So it was just a lousy environment and, ugh, 
I don't feel like I got any community out of that. All right. This is really common. Everybody who wants to be a fine artist with an MFA, they all apply to Yale and Columbia. Not only that, but they always apply in painting. This, this is what everybody <laughs> does. And Jordan, I don't know why everybody thinks I'm the only person doing this. This is new and original. And I, I just think people have to be more open-minded. Do you see this, Jordan? People just have tunnel vision. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I, th I think a lot of people have this plan for their life and it's supposed to go a very specific way, including the college that they go to. Like, I know one person uh, who said, I've been wanting to go to RISD since I was like seven. And I was like, my gosh, like that's insane. Now she ended up going and, and did well, but at the same time, like sometimes that can be very destructive and it de life doesn't have to be an all or nothing type of scenario. And that mindset, if you carry it to every situation in your life, I don't think it's going to pan out very well. So I would be willing to open up the horizons a little bit and you know, still go in the art direction. If that's what you really want to do, but consider other schools uh, and, and see what they offer. Lauren, I know you did apply to Yale, but are you happy with your experience at Hunter right now? I am so glad that I ended up going to Hunter because it is, okay, so Hunter does do a lot of painting still. I am a painter. I've been a painter for a while, so I did apply in painting, but I think that the vibe here, they put all the students together. Everybody's taking classes with everybody else, so I'm in class with new media people, sculptors, like uh, photographers, my professors are not all painters. I only started taking classes with painting professors last year. And I've been in the program for, <laughs> it's going to be four years by the time I graduate. Um, so I think that, yeah, you want to broaden your horizons a little bit, especially if you're not if you're not in painting, the only reason people choose painting is because it's very, it's, it's pretty clear what painters do after they graduate because painting is highly commodified. You know, you sell paintings. It's kind of like difficult to, like new media projects have a different, and social practice have different objectives. So think about that. Think, is that really what you want to do? And then apply to the places that have a better fit for that thing. The majors that are offered at the MFA programs can be confusing because Jordan, I think you were a game <laughs> design major, but you're not into games long term. You want to make shadow boxers into an animated series. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason um, I got to be careful how I say this because I technically I teacher now. So <laughs> but the reason I, I chose the game design part one, it was the influence of one of the instructors who, uh, who guided me. Um, but two, I just, I, I saw the quality of work in different majors and I kind of just compared them. I said, as much as I'm not going to work in games specifically, like the skills I want belong in this category. And so that's why I chose that. And after I graduate, they can't control what I do. I can always switch later on. For me, it was more about skill building than anything else. Um, so, you know, even though I can't say I'm an animation major, or visual development major or something like that at my school, I still feel like I can transition very easily. John is asking, I heard it's super hard to get admitted to the Hunter College MFA. Lauren, how about your thoughts on that? It depends what you are applying with. Again, Hunter doesn't have majors, but it certainly has a number of people within each uh, specialty, I guess. It is known as a school that has lots of painters in it so a lot of people apply with painting but i do know that they're trying to expand their presence among new genres new media kinds of folks so that is potentially an easier avenue of application we have fewer photographers that kind of stuff so it's it's mostly what if you how do i put it it, it just it just depends. Like if you're making figurative painting, so is everybody else that's applying here right now. So that's going to be innately harder than some other mediums that have less representation here. Lauren, if you think about the numbers of people applying to an MFA in sculpture, how much bigger or smaller do you think that is than MFA in painting? Oh man, you mean at Hunter or just in general? In general. 
I don't even know because I'm not in the sculpture world. I'm sorry. I couldn't even make a number, a guess, but I think that painters is just way more. There are just so many painters in the world. Pat is asking, are the people looking at the applications open-minded? Probably not. <laughs> they probably have the thing they like, the thing that they don't like. And it all depends on who's on the committee. Because at RISD, being on the admissions committee in some cases is a rotating job. So Professor A might be doing applications this year and then not doing it the next year. And there are other programs where it's the chair that does it with other faculty. And oh boy, Jordan, people will say that they're trying to be fair and balanced, but a lot of them are not. And, you know, in the art world, especially, everything is subjective on a certain level. You know, there's someone out there who doesn't like The Incredibles. You know, I think it's a fantastic movie. I love every moment of it. But there's some people just like, eh, not for me. And it doesn't make any, well, no, it does make certain opinions wrong on that. But you know, otherwise, usually, um, usually that's just how it is. People have differing opinions on stuff and you can't take that too seriously sometimes. Elena says, can you do an MFA with an English lit background? I always wanted to be an artist and move to the States. I made it. I live in the States now, but now I'm struggling finding my place in the art world. Any tips, Lauren? Yeah, you can. There are, I remember when I was working at the New Hampshire Institute of Art, there were definitely people that were coming in from writing backgrounds and that was cool. Um, so you want to do you do want to make some professional contacts that are i'm going to say visual artists if you want to go into visual art for your mfa i'd advise that the year beforehand at least get some of that both for their experience because they've been in it in that particular area longer than you have but also just to prepare yourself for the application i think that would be really helpful before you make that decision to apply Weeping Dog says, is wanting only one university and feeling that one is the only one for you wrong, or should I try to expand my thought process? You can do that. We're not saying you can't, but it's like saying, hey, I hope I get to date Hugh Jackman after he divorces his wife from me, but I believe the likeliness of that happening is not that high. And you have to be prepared for huge disappointment because I don't think you should put all your eggs in one basket in general, in life. I think that is not a good idea. Ginger says you can switch your concentration for your MFA, right? I'm painting right now, but I don't know if I'll stay after my bachelor's. Could you switch at your school, Jordan? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. So you, after you get the bachelor's degree from one major, switching it to another for master's? Is that what the question is? Well, so you were a game design mm -hmm. major, right? If you halfway through said, oh, I don't want to be a game design major anymore. I want oh, to do this. Um, I mean, you could. It'll make, here's the thing. Like for me, I was kind of settled in it. Um, but if I were in someone else's shoes who was not sure, I would just be aware of the cost. <laughs> how much is that going to cost and how much extra time you're going to have to be there because sometimes your credits might not transfer. And so what normally would have been a two and a half year journey now turns into three and a half to four years and not everyone can support that. Um, so you might have to kind of finagle your way around the situation. Beware of, quote, good aid packages. This happened to one of your friends, Lauren. Yes. And to a lesser extent, it has happened to me as well. When you're applying for your MFA and you get past the stage, first of all, you don't know anything about any aid packages unless they say they don't have any at all when you first apply. And you have to wait until after you've been accepted for them to start talking money to you or with you. And then what happens is they'll really want you to come. They, they're trying to fill up their little quota. And so they'll pressure you, <laughs> they'll pressure you to go and they'll say something about numbers, but if they're not specific about their numbers, if they just say a good aid package and then they drag their feet, that is kind of, mm, my friend got burned on this and it was a good school, but he ultimately said no because they were being real shifty about their aid package. And that's, 
maybe doesn't make a whole lot of difference for the school, but for you who's going into your MFA and doesn't know what you're, you might take on a huge amount of loans. That's like some big life changing stuff. You want to know everything. So that's also another reason why I ended up choosing Hunter. They don't have a packages really, but they're cheap. So it's cool. Well, these two questions are somewhat similar. Dob is saying, how do you know it's worth doing an MFA versus evening classes, courses, working on your own, given how masters seem to be about self-taught learning anyway? Marielle says, first career in academics, would it be better to try an art school or try to switch to an art career by self-study? I feel I lack a formal education. Well, Jordan, there are so many learning options now. When I went to my, there were no options online. Nobody was teaching or learning online. And yet now there are a lot of options. So how would you weigh, Jordan, okay, is it really worth going back to the MFA or, hey, I, I can explore other things? Uh, I think the two biggest factors I would consider are, one, how you in, as an individual learn best. Some people learn better in a classroom setting, such as myself. It's much easier if I have an instructor kind of explain things and do drawovers and sit in a classroom and learn from other people than for me to just sit and binge watch videos and just expect to learn it. Um, so that's one thing. The other, for an MFA, one of the benefits is that you get to teach at the college level. If that's a goal that you have, then an MFA is definitely worth it. Um, if neither of those are really a concern for you and you're like, I can spend 15 years learning at night, no pro no problem, and you don't want to teach, then maybe some self-study and watching uh, all of our videos from the last se several years is going to be the best option for you. Question for Lauren, why did it take four years at Hunter? Is that typical? No, it's not, but there was a pandemic that just happened. <laughs> Um, and so Hunter is usually three years as it is. And then with the pandemic, we were allowed to either skip or not skip, but take off a semester a year or go part time. So I've been pretty much going part time this whole program, which is why it's taken longer. Thank you so much to Frijo Lito and also RB Dick. We are so appreciative for your support. All right, we do have other streams that talk about MFA applications that we would recommend you take a look at because a lot of this information is really not available. We're sort of it as far as giving a real take on how this works. And if you want more art prof, we've got Jordan and his YouTube channel. He is doing a live stream tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific. And what are you going to be working on, Jordan? Uh, I think I'll be doing some background characters for Shadow Boxers. So just coming up with a lot of different designs. You guys can see the process of how I think about things. It should be a good time. Remember, registration is open for one more week. We've got two premium workshops. One is about selling your art. And the other one is a drawing workshop, drawing animals in color. You guys better get on this registration because there's only a few spots left. And I know some people wait to the last and don't do that because these are filling up much quicker than I thought they would. So again, we have selling your art and we have drawing animals in color. And this is due Friday, October 28th. This Google slideshow is available. The link is in the YouTube video description below. You can access all of our slideshows on artprof.org. After the stream, please join Lauren and I. We will be in the Art Prof Discord. In post live streams, you can chat with us there typing. And we can answer more questions because there are a lot of questions we did not get to. And thank you all for your contributions to the fall raffle. I have not done the numbers yet, but it's looking like we got enough to cover my new desktop. So I so appreciate this from everybody because we can't do it without these donations. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes and subscribe to our channel for more art tutorials, critiques, and business tips. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.